On Saturday, June 17th, one day before the Titan is set to begin his descent, UK billionaire explorer Hamish Harden revealed on Instagram that he was part of the crew on the submersible vessel on their way to explore the Titanic wreckage. I am proud to finally announce that I joined Ocean Gate Expeditions for the RMS Titanic mission as a mission specialist on the sub going down to the Titanic due to the worst winter in Newfoundland in 40 years. This mission is likely to be the first and only manned mission to the Titanic in 2023. A weather window has just opened up and we're going to attempt a dive tomorrow. Harding said the five member crew has set sail from St. John's, Canada on Friday. They were planning to start their 4,000 meter descent to the most famous shipwreck in the world at 4 a.m. on Sunday morning. Until then, we have a lot of preparations and briefings to do, he said. More expedition updates to follow if the weather holds. That would be his final post. Around an hour and 45 minutes after the start of the journey, the Titan stopped communicating with the support vessel Polar Prince. The submersible that vanished was owned by Ocean Gate Expeditions. This company deploys manned submersibles for deep sea exploration. In the past, the sub advertised its voyages that would take tourists to the RMS Titanic wreckage for $250,000 a seat. CBS's Sunday morning correspondent David Pogue said last year that Ocean Gate's deep sea vessel, dubbed the Titan, was the only five person submersible capable of reaching the Titanic's depths, which is nearly two and a half miles below the ocean surface. BBC News reported the vessel usually carries a captain, three paying passengers, and a person who is described by the company as a content expert. Ocean Gate said the Titan, a 22 foot long vessel weighing around 23,000 pounds, can reach depths of up to 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet and has about 96 hours of life support for a crew of five people. Unfortunately, the search came to a tragic end on Thursday after rescue officials discovered debris from the imploded vessel near the wreckage of the Titanic. The submarine was confirmed to have suffered a catastrophic collapse and that all five people on board had died. The sub was originally planned to start its descent at 4 a.m. Eastern Time, according to the post by Harding on Instagram. But according to the U.S. Coast Guard, the descent starts four hours later. Harding will board the sub along with Pakistani-born businessman Tezada Dawood and his son Suleiman, renowned French explorer Paul Henry Nargiolet, who was part of the first expedition to the Titanic in 1987, and Ocean Gate chief executive Stockton Rush who is acting as pilot for the submersible. The U.S. Coast Guard reports that the sub begins a descent of two hours to the Titanic's wreckage. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, the Titan submersible was launched at 8 in the morning, Eastern Time. At 9.45 a.m., one hour and 45 minutes later, communication between the submersible and the surface vessel Polar Prince was lost, about 900 nautical miles east of Cape Cod on the U.S. coast. According to another source, the vessel was programmed to send out a ping every 15 minutes to indicate its location. The final signal was sent around 10 a.m. Eastern Time, according to the Times. Now we know that around this time, a top-secret acoustic detection system of the U.S. Navy picked up sounds consistent with an implosion or explosion. The Navy eventually would pass on this information to the U.S. Coast Guard, but only days later. According to the Coast Guard, the sub was meant to resurface at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. At 5.40 p.m. Eastern Time, the rest of the crew alerted the authorities when it failed to resurface. At a press conference in Boston, Captain Jamie Frederick of the U.S. Coast Guard said, On Sunday, the command center in Boston received a report from the Canadian expedition vessel Polar Prince of an overdue submarine, Titan, with five people on board. The Titan is designed to surface automatically in the event of technical failure. Rescuers need to reach the Titan within 96 hours if it's on the surface. According to officials, if the submersible remains intact, there is an estimated 70 to 96 hours worth of oxygen, making the rescue mission a race against time. Ocean Gate sent out an alarm Monday morning from the Polar Prince, indicating that the submersible was missing. A large-scale search was initiated. The U.S. Coast Guard revealed that they had begun a sweeping search of 5,000 square miles. Officials have also asked commercial vessels for help. At 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the U.S. Coast Guard tweeted that a C-130 Hercules reconnaissance aircraft had been dispatched to search 
for the Titan, thinking that a malfunction may have caused the vehicle to remain stuck underwater. Rescue Coordination Center Halifax in Canada also delivers the P-8 Poseidon aircraft, which can drop sonar buoys that can monitor to a depth of 13,000 feet or 4,000 meters. It's a remote area, and it's a challenge to conduct the search in that remote area, but we are deploying all available assets to make sure we can locate the craft and rescue the people on board. U.S. Coast Guard Real Admiral John Mauger told reporters during a briefing Monday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The search includes submersibles, including an unmanned U.S. Navy Curve 21 that can reach depths of up to 4,000 meters. The rescuers conducted searches all through Monday night. During this time, Harding's stepson, Brian Sass, confirms that Harding is on board the missing submersible in a statement on Instagram. Rescuers searched for roughly 48 hours and covered 10,000 square miles of ocean with no sign of the missing submersible. On Tuesday afternoon, OceanGate confirmed that its CEO and founder Stockton Rush is aboard the submersible as a member of the crew. The family of Pakistani-born businessman Shazada Dawood also confirmed he is on board with his 19-year-old son, Suleiman. Meanwhile, the U.S. Coast Guard continues to coordinate rescue efforts while also reaching out for help from the U.S. Navy, as well as the private sector. A commercial pipeline vessel arrives in the region. Rescuers are hopeful that it will enable them to search to depths of up to 3,800 meters after an unsuccessful night. The search area was expanded by 10,000 square miles, and a Canadian aircraft P-3 Aurora also joined the effort. At 10.50 a.m. Eastern Time, France announced it would help with the search by deploying Atalante, a ship equipped with a deep-sea diving vessel. During a press conference, Captain Frederick delivers an update on the rescue efforts. He says the Titan has between 40 and 41 hours of oxygen remaining as of 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Captain Frederick explains that the Coast Guard lacks the equipment or expertise to conduct a deep sea search and rescue. He stated that a unified command of multiple agencies was working together to solve the very complicated problem of locating the vessel. Captain Frederick said, since Sunday, the Coast Guard has coordinated search efforts with the U.S. and Canadian Coast Guard, Air National Guard aircraft and the Polar Prince. This combined effort has covered an area of 7,600 square miles, which is larger than the state of Connecticut. These search efforts have focused on both surface and subsurface areas. To date, those search efforts have not yielded any results. Captain Frederick was non committal, however, when asked if there is any way to retrieve the submersible and save the five on board if it's actually located. So right now all of our efforts are focused on finding the sub, he said. What I will tell you is we have a group of our nation's best experts in the unified command and if we can get to that point, those experts will be looking at what's the next course of action. Harding's friend, Janik Mikkelsen said, and as it stands right now, it would be a miracle if they are recovered alive. The search becomes a big international operation. More ships, underwater vessels, and aircrafts joined the mission. Later that day, sounds were detected over several hours by a Canadian P-3 aircraft equipped with gears to trace submarines. The U.S. Coast Guard, which announced this on Wednesday, does not give a precise timing. The Canadian aircraft was reported to have detected banging sounds at intervals of 30 minutes. Four hours later, additional sonar was deployed and the banging was still heard. Captain Frederick assured the public in a Wednesday afternoon press conference that the authorities were doing all they could to help find the missing vessel. The search was intensifying with the use of more technology. Frederick confirmed that the vessel had less than 24 hours of oxygen left. He also acknowledged that officials do not know if the crews will be able to rescue the people on board, even if they do manage to find the sub before the oxygen runs out. At 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the U.S. Coast Guard says more underwater noises were detected and that the search area had increased to two times the size of Connecticut. However, the French ship Atalante, carrying the Victor 6000 underwater rove, the only one capable of reaching the Titanic's wreck at 4,000 meters under the ocean surface, had a narrow window of time to conduct rescue operations as it only reached the site on Wednesday night. The air supply on the missing submarine came down to its last hours, as rescue workers continued their increasingly desperate search for the five stranded passengers. 
a U.S. Coast Guard spokesperson told The Independent. They expect the vessel will run out of oxygen at 8 in the morning, Eastern Time, since the vessel only has 96 hours of oxygen from the time it's sealed. Around 11 a.m. Eastern Time, a Canadian Navy ship carrying a medical team specializing in dive medicine arrives on scene at around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Officials announced they would hold the press conference at 3 p.m. U.S. Coast Guard announced that a debris field was found near the wreckage of the Titanic, containing five major pieces of the vessel that was spotted by a remotely operated vehicle scouring the seabed near the Titanic's wreck. When asked about the chances of recovering the bodies, Real Admiral Mauger said, This is an incredibly unforgiving environment and the debris is consistent with the catastrophic implosion of the vessel. And so we'll continue to work and continue to search. But I don't have an answer for prospects at this time. Experts explained that an implosion under the pressure of the deep sea will have destroyed the ship almost instantly. In a fraction of a second, it's gone. Will Conan, chairman of the Marine Technology Society, told Reuters. Conan stated that the implosion took place in just a millisecond. It's probably a merciful end, as it was a better ending than being trapped for four days in the cold, dark, and cramped space. This will have happened quickly. I don't believe anyone had time to notice what happened. United States Coast Guard said the underwater sounds and banging noises detected earlier were unrelated to the missing submersible. The U.S. Coast Guard announced that the debris was consistent with both a catastrophic failure of the pressure chamber and an implosion. The five crew members on the Titan were likely killed instantly. The U.S. Coast Guard offered its deepest condolences to the family after the tail of the vessel was found around 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic's wreck. Experts say the total cost to U.S. taxpayers but the search and rescue operation could range from $1.5 million up to several million dollars, reigniting the debate over who pays to rescue both the risk takers. Ocean Gate Expeditions released a statement saying, these men were true explorers who shared a distinct spirit of adventure and a deep passion for exploring and protecting the world's oceans. Our hearts are with the five souls and every member of their families during this tragic time. We grieve the loss of life and joy they brought to everyone they knew. Stockton Rush wanted to be known as an innovator, and it didn't matter how he did it. I wanted to be Captain Kirk, and in our lifetime, the final frontier is the ocean, he told the journalist in 2017. You're remembered for the rules you break, he once said, quoting U.S. General Douglas MacArthur. I've broken some rules, he said about the Titan. I think I've broken them with logic and good engineering behind me. The ocean promised adventure, adrenaline, and mystery. He also believed they promised profits if his submersible design was successful. His maverick nature attracted people, earning him the admiration of his passengers, employees, and investors. His passion was amazing, and I bought into it, said Aaron Newman, who traveled on Russia's Titan sub and eventually became an Ocean Gate investor. A Russia's soaring ambition also drew scrutiny from industry experts who warned he was cutting corners, putting innovation ahead of safety and risking potential catastrophic results. It wasn't something he was willing to accept, and he paid the ultimate price. At 19, he became the youngest pilot to ever qualify for jet transport rating, the highest pilot rating obtainable. He worked on F-15s and anti-satellite missile programs, with the hope of eventually joining the US space program and becoming an astronaut. But eventually that ambition waned, as a trip to the Red Planet seemed increasingly out of reach. So he shifted his gaze downward, and founded OceanGate in 2009. OceanGate, as a privately owned company, is not required to publish its financial records. U.S. financial records for January 2020 revealed that Rush and other directors sold the stake of the company, valued at $18 million, thought to have been used to fund the development of Titan. To recoup the costs, OceanGate sub came with a price tag of $250,000 for an underwater trip. Rush's clients were uber-rich thrill-seekers, willing to part with that sum of money for a once-in-a-lifetime adventure. Although some may consider Rush a visionary, he wasn't free of criticism. CBS journalist David Pogue had joined Rush on a trip to the Titanic's wreck in 2021 and said the chief executive drove the Titan with a game controller and used rusty lead pipes from the construction industry as ballast. Pogue also said the sub went missing for a couple of hours because the communication system wasn't working properly. Yet Russia assured Polk that the only thing that mattered was the vessel's hull, 
built from an unusual and largely untested material for a deep sea vessel, carbon fiber, with titanium end plates. Rush knew carbon fiber was used successfully in yachts and aviation, and he believed his submersible could be made cheaper than the industry standard made of steel. Is a rule you don't do that, said Rush in 2021. Well, I did. Titan's tube shaped cabin was also unique. The hull of a deep diving sub is usually spherical, which means it receives an equal amount of pressure at every point, but the Titan had a cylinder shaped cabin. Ocean Gate gave its sensors to analyze the effects of changing pressure. The glass viewport, from which passengers could see out, was only certified down to 1300 meters, far short of the depths of the ocean floor, where the Titanic's wreck lay. Rob McCullum, an explorer who acted as a consultant for Ocean Gate, became concerned when Rush decided against getting an official certification for the submersible. Subs can be certified or classed by marine organizations, meaning the vehicle must meet certain standards on things like stability, strength, safety, and performance. But this process is not mandatory. In emails to Rush in March 2018, seen by BBC News, McCullum said, you are wanting to use a prototype on class technology in a very hostile place. You are potentially putting an entire industry at risk. 4,000 meters down in the mid-Atlantic is not the type of place you can cut corners. Rush said he was tired of industry players who tried to use a safety argument to stop innovation. He said that safety was not about paperwork, but rather culture. He spoke of needing sensible design, extensive testing, and informed consent of the participants but said a piece of paper would not guarantee safety. While he admitted deviating from some guidelines, he argued the Titan's safety systems were beyond anything else in use. I know that our engineering-focused, innovative approach lies in the face of the submersible orthodoxy, but that is the nature of innovation. The tense exchange ended after Ocean Gate's lawyers threatened legal action, McCullum said. McCullum wasn't the only one to voice concerns about safety. David Lockridge was the former submersible pilot for Ocean Gate Expeditions. He raised safety concerns during inspections about numerous items, including the way the hull had been tested. He then filed a lawsuit against the company. Lockridge was fired and sued by Ocean Gate for allegedly disclosing confidential information in the whistleblower complaint to OSHA, said in a court filing. According to his claim, he learned the vessel was built to withstand the certified pressure of 1300 meters but Ocean Gate planned to take passengers to 4,000 meters. Lockridge also warned that the detection system was effectively useless. It would only provide milliseconds of warning before a catastrophic implosion, according to court filings. In 2018, the Marine Technology Society also planned to send an open letter to Ocean Gate, which leaked and was published in the New York Times. The letter accused Ocean Gate of misleading claims that its design exceeded established industry standards and warned about potentially catastrophic issues. Ocean Gate's experimental approach could have negative outcomes, ranging from minor to catastrophic. This prompted the company to amend a number of details that made sure the public was aware. In a blog post in 2019, Rush insisted that most marine accidents were down to operator error. He said Ocean Gate took safety requirements very seriously, but that keeping an outside body informed on every modification before it was tested in a real-world setting was anathema to rapid innovation. Rush himself told CBS reporter Poe that if you want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. At some point, you're going to have to take some risk, and it really is a risk-reward question. I think I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. The real question is why, despite other successful dives, the sub's final trip ended in tragedy, Newman said. Clearly, the pressure hole gave way, right? And the question is, why would that give way? Co-founder of Ocean Gate and Russia's former business partner, Guillermo, said he would not have taken a different approach. The human submersible community globally is very small, and we all know each other. And I think generally we all respect each other's opinions. The bottom line is that everyone's got a different opinion on how subs should be designed. James Cameron, director of Titanic and another vocal critic who has visited the wreckage multiple times, described the implosion as quite surreal. He also noted that Paul Henry was a friend of his. For him to have died tragically in this way, it's almost impossible for me to process, Cameron told ABC News. A Las Vegas businessman and his son told ABC News that Stockton Rush pressured them for months 
into taking two seats on the now failed mission to the Titanic, making bold claims about the vessel's safety. Jay Bloom had been messaging Rush about joining a dive. He said the chance to see the wreckage up close would have been a bucket list experience. It was about being able to say, you did something very few people had the opportunity to do. He shared text messages between himself and Rush, where Rush dismissed concerns from Bloom and his son about taking the trip on the Titan submersible. While there's obviously a risk, it's way safer than flying in a helicopter or even scuba diving, Rush texted. Bloom said that Rush had flown out of Las Vegas on a homemade plane to convince him to join the voyage aboard the submersible. He flew it all the way to Vegas and I was like, this guy is definitely down to take risk. After his son also raised fears about the sub, Bloom declined the invitation to the fatal excursion. I'm sure he really believed what he was saying, Bloom said, but he was very wrong. Well, this is a tragedy that could have been prevented. We remember those who lost their lives. Thank you for watching. U.S. Coast Guard believes it's recovered human remains from the wreckage of the Titan submersible. That news came as debris from the Titan arrived at a port in Canada. The submersible, of course, imploded last week on its way to see the wreckage of the Titanic. All five people on board were killed. The U.S. Coast Guard chief says the evidence will provide investigators with critical insights into the cause of this tragedy and help ensure a similar tragedy does not occur.